Welcome to America's Commercial Real Estate Show, your, for, your source for market intel, forecasts, and strategies. Hey, hello, I am Michael Bull, and I know you're glad you are not. <laughs> Thanks for being with us. Well, uh, this segment is brought to you by CommercialAgentSuccess.com. If you know a commercial real estate agent, tell them to check out CommercialAgentSuccess.com. They'll be glad they did. Well, today we're going to talk about a subject that is we hear is very important to everyone in real estate and it's cybersecurity. Now, before you change the channel on me, uh, we're going to make this easier. We're going to give you some ideas to help you and, and help you get a handle on it. And this is not just for the internet type online kind of things. Now, we're going to talk about buildings in real estate. So this is very important for you to know if you have anything to do with commercial real estate. Please welcome my guest. It's Tom Shercliffe, and he's co-founder with Intelligent Buildings, and he's joining us on Skype. Tom, thanks for being with us. Hey, Michael, thanks for having me. Well, Tom, and, and kind of where I started the intro there is because uh, some people kind of glaze over, talk about cybersecurity. Wait, I'm not a, I'm not a IT geek, right? But we're talking to real estate people here right around the country. And, and, and I like the way you, you were explaining it to me. You really kind of want to think about cybersecurity really in kind of two main buckets, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, everybody hears about cybersecurity in the news, and you think about credit card records and HR database and these kind of things, and that's, that is really important. And in real estate, we do have that with, uh, you know, asset management records and, and work order management and those things, you know, in the back office, and th that is important. But what does not get enough attention is really what we all in real estate do for a living, and that is the buildings themselves, uh, the front of house, if you will. And in the front of house, we have we have uh, building control systems like HVAC, elevator, lighting, parking, metering, access control, and so on. And uh, what people don't maybe realize is that for almost 40 years, since somewhere in the 80s, all of these uh, control systems that we thought were just dirty fingernail type systems uh, are built on computers with little networks and, and have remote access uh, to the internet. So these are just little networks everywhere, and, and it's, it's becoming a real problem. Yeah. So you have the cybersecurity kind of most people kind of think about in the beginning, right, with their computers and their, and their phones and their, 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 their networks. And, and, and they have people for that, right? They, they typically have their IT people for that side. Yeah, and, and, and also that is, is as important as it is, it's a very established segment there are lots of providers for that, and there are a lot of solutions for that. It's a, it's a mature conversation, you know, although complicated and important as it is. Um, what, again, we're not paying that much attention to is, is, again, what we all do in the buildings. And that takes a little bit different type of resource. We found we've been in the management consulting space around smart buildings for 15 years now. And one thing that we found is that traditional, let's call it big IT, um, has not done very well in smart buildings and this this type of cybersecurity in buildings because, as we all know, there is a particular culture uh, around um, uh, property management, facility management, uh, contractor, subcontractor, system integrators. Um, that's a very uh, you know, multi-decade established culture and environment, and it just doesn't work the same way as IT does. So you're right; it takes it takes a little bit different uh, lens to look at it and deal with it. Right, and and as you mentioned, um, all these systems that are in all of our buildings all around us, uh, most of those are controlled or accessed uh, online. So um, someone might that that has ill intent for you might come in through one of those kind of weaker systems and maybe get into your your accounting and other things? Yeah, so that, that's uh, what you're referring to is, is what a lot of people call network hopping. So even if you were tending to your back office things as you should with a more traditional IT solution, um, if any of those people in your back office have anything to do or any um, uh, view into the control systems and so forth, just by looking at them, 
um, if someone came in through an old DSL line that was connected to your parking system uh, for remote maintenance, they now potentially could hop onto your corporate network, and that that is that is that is a problem. But I will tell you that network hopping is is, is a real risk and a, and a problem. Uh, but what you're referring, what we're talking about now is a hacking situation. And I think what we need to realize is that there are a lot more operational risk on just the outside in or the hacking. Um, so let's just take a quick example of a, of a generic REIT, let's say that has 100 buildings, just to use round numbers. And if we, if we took um, uh, HVAC, elevator, lighting, metering, parking, irrigation, kind of go down the list of all these uh, digital control systems, you might have as many as 10 control systems in a building. So 100 buildings, 10 systems, you, you have 1,000 control systems. And if you're really good, you may have uh, consolidated your contractors down to only having, let's say, 300 contractors, <laughs> right? Yeah. So uh, now I'm thinking, wow, uh, do I even know what systems are in what building? Do I know what, who all the contractors are? And do I know what they have done in, in configuring all those individual systems? And the point I'm making here now is that this is really more of an inside out problem, meaning with the, your systems and your contractors, than it is at first an outside in problem with hackers. It's definitely an issue, you gotta deal with it. But I, I would wake up more worried that I have a thousand control systems and I don't even have an inventory of what they are, what version they are, exactly who uh, manages them and more importantly, what they've done to configure each of those systems. And I'll give you a couple of examples of why the configuring is important. In each of those systems, let's just elevator system, there is a, whether there's a, um, information as to whether or not it has a password, uh, whether or not there are too many super users set up, whether old contractors have been removed from the system, whether the software is current on it, and if it's ever been backed up. Uh, so uh, there, there are real operational risk, and it, it's really, Michael, an important point as we're talking about this inside-out approach that now you might not even call it cybersecurity as much as you call it vendor risk management. And uh, uh, there are a lot of the analysts in the industry that say vendor risk management is increasingly one of the most important risk issues uh, for real estate executives. Yeah, and what do you say to the uh, building owner? Maybe he owns one building and there's one or two or three systems on in, in his building. And he says, well, look, I have insurance for that, don't I? Uh, that's, a, that's a good point. And, and whether it's one building or 100 buildings, um, as management consultants on, on these topics, we actually looked into the insurance is, issue as, a, as an executive uh, uh, risk topic. And wow, were we surprised. <clears throat> we talked to uh, a lot of the main carriers, as well as the large uh, aggregators like Aon Willis, uh, Gallagher, Marsh. And we got essentially the same answer across the board, is that it, it sounded like a risk issue. Nobody had brought it up. Um, and it, generally speaking, was not addressed in, in general liability, property and casualty, or in most cyber riders. So you ask a really important question. And that's, that's a little bit more of a validator to this topic. Um, and one more point on that, they said <laughs> it was, I'm not sure how comforting it was, but they said, if, you know, third party risk was probably a, a more covered, meaning if somebody died in an elevator, uh, whereas first party risk, if there was malware and a chiller from a, a ransomware because of one of your uh, maintenance people, that probably wasn't covered. So again, this, this vendor risk management and this inside out approach is really uh, the bigger, uh, more immediate problem. Yeah, and if you will, as, a, as real estate people, how might we think about this? How might we start to kind of get an idea of how to, how to manage this? Well, I think that's really the good news because when we say cybersecurity, you know, everybody just thinks, you know, where do I even start? Algorithms and firewalls and, you know, big IT and these kind of things. But what we've been talking about for the past few minutes here is really something as, as, as fragmented and complicated as it is, it's something we can all understand. Literally, the blind spot is knowing what systems, what contractors, and what they've done. And so, uh, again, we call that the blind spot because uh, uh, I mentioned the word fragmentation. 
what that means, as we all know in real estate, is that your parking contractor probably doesn't manage your HVAC and your lighting contractor probably doesn't manage your elevator, right? So there's their fragmentation is a given. And the other thing we all know is turnover, right? So whether it's property management changes and companies, uh, facility management, uh, staff changes, contractor rebids for maintenance and so forth. So got fragmentation and turnover, uh, very difficult place to get an inventory and, and then much less a risk assessment. So all that being said, that's a lot of blocking and tackling, but it's not rocket science to do it. You, we, we found we, it really helps to have a, a tool purpose built for that. Spreadsheets kind of get out of control and project management tools don't work. But given that you can have a tool and, and hopefully somebody that knows what they're doing, it's really not about the uh, head hurting, you know, IT algorithms and firewalls at first. Yeah, and I liked uh, under the classification where you put it, where you know, kind of property managers and asset managers can got to get a handle on this, basically inventory and assessment, right? Yeah, yeah, inventory assessment. And, and as you were describing some of those categories, just want to go back to an earlier point that we were talking about that since the 80s, all of these systems have been digital and means they work on computers, they have uh, operating systems and protocols, and they, they work on networks and they're internet accessible. But if you think about it for a second, for 40 years, those little digital systems, and sometimes big ones, have been um, designed, installed, and maintained by uh, a, a real estate value chain that has no IT experience. So let's just think architects, engineers, GCs, contractors, facility managers, property managers, and asset managers for, for four decades. So you can imagine the digital mess that we have out there and the operational risk that that creates. Yeah, so kind of the first step is kind of really just kind of inventory that, right? Kind of figure out what systems you have. Yeah, because even if you came in with a magic solution, you wouldn't know what you're doing it on or who you're doing it to, to, to whom. Uh, so uh, inventory and, and uh, of all of those things and some, some form of assessment, we like to use, I don't want to get too technical, but we like to use the, a government cyber standard called NIST. It's just a framework for thinking about cyber risk. Uh, so an inventory and some kind of assessment. And then, and then after that, you, you move into obviously a, a remediation phase. And, and I want to just add again for the for the uh, those watching today, that the remediation phase can can be largely dealt with with policy. I mean, I'm going to be silly, but it's not. It's almost that easy. All contractors must have complex passwords. All systems must be backed up. All systems must have uh, the current revision of the manufacturer software within six months. I mean, these are really basic things, but the remediation phase can go there. Now, again, we may end up or the customer may end up putting um, uh, some kind of a black box or remote access uh, uh, tool or service. That's fine. Uh, but but I just want to give the, the real estate executive some some relief that inventory is an inventory. Um, uh, a policy is something that, it, that is largely common sense because usually there is none today. And then the, the final piece of that might be that you um, uh, then develop some way to monitor compliance with the policy. So if we do that, wow, you've really come a long way whether or not we're, we're dealing with, uh, uh, with the networking side, which again, which, which is appropriate, but not the first instinct of a lot of real estate uh, managers. Yeah. But, but now you've helped us kind of concept it, if you will, as we think about kind of in the commercial real estate world, hey, what's your inventory? Let's, let's look at each one and kind of assess it and then figure out, all right, now what needs to be our policies kind of moving forward with, with all of the vendors and people who, who touch this thing, right? And, and, what, and what are the passwords and how often are things yeah. updated and backed up, right? Yeah, and actually uh, we've seen some of our larger customers um, after going through some of that are moving to a little bit more of a vendor consolidation approach uh, because again, I'm, you know, if you have however many buildings you have times at least three to five control systems, sometimes 10 or 12 times the number of contractors, um, it, it, it really can get unruly even if you have a policy and even if you're monitoring that policy compliance. So it's something else to consider. 
uh, uh, thinking about consolidating the number of vendors and qualifying them and using not only uh, the quality of their service and their product as a criteria, but uh, whether or not they get it uh, in terms of the portfolio owners or managers policy and uh, policy requirements and whether they can even adhere to that. And so we're, we're seeing uh, consolidation as one of the one of the destinations for the conversation. Yeah, yeah, well that makes sense. And, and I think we all kind of get the maybe the malware hopping if something comes up on a simple system that, that some malware can infect and then it kind of jumps onto to more serious uh, applications that we use in our business every day. But also just in the uh, equipment alone, I mean there are some challenges with, with, with those systems going down because of uh, of these of these cyber risk right uh, it's not just yeah. it, it happened just uh, the systems themselves can can cause some serious issues yeah and and, and that inventory is going to help in a lot of ways just as you're describing from an operational risk perspective because uh, you would not believe the decades old computers that are running a lot of our buildings and when you upgrade certain components of a control system it may take down the server because it just can't keep up uh, so really knowing uh, what computer is, is that the system is running on and its software, the, uh, the manufacturer software for the HVAC, elevator, lighting, metering, parking, is really important just from a daily operational risk perspective. And let's don't forget uh, that, uh, that the turnover aspect of that. Somebody takes over the control system, maybe even a property manager takes over with total P&L. Did they plan on upgrading or replacing systems? Maybe not. Let's get it to work as long as our contract lasts. I mean, this this is becoming, you know, the, the digital mess is certainly a cyber issue, but there's more to it as you're describing than that, just in daily operational risk and order, really. Yeah. You know, and it's good to bring up because I think, you know, we may forget about the computers and software that's running our systems, uh, but that our everyday computers that we use. I mean, I'll turn around and my IT guy will say, well, your computer's no good. The thing's three years old. And I'm like, wait a minute. It seems like I just bought it yesterday. What do you mean this thing's old? That's a piece of crap now. So there's a lot of old systems out there and they're running our, our, our properties. And so what are some things you might have, what, life safety issues? You should have some, some uh, systems going down that cause you, what, some legal problems? Uh, those are kind of issues to think about. Maybe no, it's, it, it, it's a good question because sometimes when we, we have this discussion with the portfolio, they say, okay, I get it. It's a problem. I don't know what's out there, but what's the real problem? I'm, I'm hot for a couple of hours or I'm inconvenienced, right? And we say, no, and to your point, Michael, it's uh, if, if somebody can either maliciously or even uh, inadvertently get control of your elevator or your lighting, metering and your parking, uh, there are certainly life safety issues, whether intentional, uh, you know, ill-intended uh, Ill or, or accidental. Uh, we talked about network hopping. We, we touched on insurance. Uh, there are regulatory compliance issues that you're responsible for. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, a, you know, in the, in the IT world, there's a regular um, uh, audit process around their process and controls, just how they run the railroad. Um, and as these regulatory bodies are looking at these corporations and REITs and hospitals and campuses and so forth, they're saying, wait a minute, you've got dozens or hundreds of networks that are not in your process and controls pro uh, uh, audit, audit uh, um, process. And so that's something that is coming whether we like it or not. If it's a network and it's internet connected and you have regulatory issues, that, that's, that's going to be a, a deal. And then also if, uh, if you are a, a landlord or a property manager and one of these problems we discuss causes a tenant not to be able to occupy a building with no danger, let's say, uh, mal uh, let's say ransomware in your HVAC system in July and, and, and you can't occupy the building for a couple of days, uh, what's the tenant going to do in terms of legal and uh, productivity loss and that kind of stuff? So yeah. there are real consequential uh, issues to this. And, and even if you think your lease protects you there, um, you know, it still doesn't, that doesn't help your reputation. Well, that's a great point because the, the, the final bullet point on what can go wrong is really brand damage. Uh, whether or not you have insurance, which we know is, is, a, is, a, is a maybe, um, and whether or not your lease and other things protect you, it's just not going to be good for the brand, whether it's the corporation uh, or the landlord or the property manager or even the tenant. 
and and you could even go all the way into the to the manufacturer of the system that that, that had a problem. So it, it's just not, and we've had this happen in some cases. And uh, one other thing I'd like to add is that uh, since we do this for a living, we know there are a lot of cases of this, uh, both operational. Uh, uh, problems and even the uh, ransomware and so forth. The reason that your listeners don't hear about this is because usually it's only personal information that's required to be announced or divulged. Uh, so I can tell you that it is, it is happening out there uh, quietly, but, uh, but growing. Well, it's an interesting topic because, uh, you know, when we do these update shows with real estate professionals and economists and analysts who look at some of the, the risk out there in commercial real estate, I'm continuing to hear about cybersecurity. And Tom, thanks for coming on and telling us, hey, there's more than just our computers, our networks. We need to look at our buildings and make sure we're safe there. Any any parting tip for our listeners, Tom? Yeah, no, just a couple thoughts. One is, you know, it, it, is, it is just a common sense uh, blind spot that you have if you don't know what systems, what contractors, and what they've done to it. And, and I would encourage you to do that. And, and also I would add, that uh, we're also industry advocates. So if, if anybody wanted to reach out to us, I'm happy to communicate the things that we did in this conversation without it being a sales pitch, just as an industry advocate, because it is such a big problem and we really don't want our industry to uh, to get a black eye if this thing starts rolling. Yeah, a good point. So Tom Shercliffe, and he's with Intelligent Buildings. Uh, look him up if you have any questions. Tom, th sir, thanks for being on the show. Enjoyed it, thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, do, do look him up. It's Intelligent Buildings. We'll have his uh, website link on the show website, which is commercialrealestateshow.com. Thank you for joining us. Uh, let us know hey, your thoughts. We appreciate you sharing the show. And uh, please do connect with us on your favorite social media. I'm Michael Bull. Until next week, be sure that you always lead, learn, and laugh. And join us for America's Commercial Real Estate Show. America's Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Bull Realty. For customized asset and occupancy solutions, visit bullrealty.com. Commercial Agent Success Strategies, incredible training for commercial agents. Visit commercialagentsuccess.com.